I made a true ADF challenge, alternate day fasting challenge for those that are looking to lose weight this year. If you tried other methods of losing weight and nothing is quite stuck, give this a try. Dedicate 30 days of your life to doing some mean intermittent fasting. You get a lot of benefits. You get a lot of freedoms on the days you can eat and you will reap a lot of benefits such as leaning out, losing a dresser pan size. You can reduce inflammation. You can decrease binge eating. You can stabilize your blood. It's too much. It's too much. Do you want me to write a book about it? No, there's too many. (laughs) There's so many benefits from alternate day fasting. We talk about alternate day fasting, but intermittent fasting is great, period. Next, I want to talk about the ADF group. It's free 99 on Facebook. If you have a Facebook account, if you don't have a Facebook account, but you also want support, you want a forum where you can exchange ideas, topics, uh, questions, suggestions, you want to show off your weight loss, you want to become acclimated to alternate day fasting, the alternate day fasting group on Facebook is where you need to be. Link for that is down below. I'm stunned, amazed, and astonished at the amazingness that's going on in the Facebook group. You have to pat yourself on the back. You guys are just incredible. I need you to know you're incredible. What you're doing as far as taking the step to do better, you have made the decision to change. You're lapping people. I I need you to know that you're lapping a good majority of people that have just decided to not be their best reside in mediocrity. Like I need you to know that what you're doing is, is a big deal. You may feel like it's small, but just trying is a big deal. So kudos to you. So let's get into it. Today's topic is going to be about what to have on a fast day, what to avoid on a fast day, how to get through an alternate fast day and my personal experience on fast days. Okay. If you check out some of my previous videos, you'll see I have um, fast with me videos and I basically share how I get through my fast days. And those are great videos to refer to. If you want to check out the playlist for all things alternate day fasting from me in the description box, go ahead and hit the link if you like, but let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about my, my personal experience on fast days. January 1st, I always start the challenge with a feast day. It makes you feel secure. It gets you prepared. You're in the challenge, but not really feeling the challenge yet. And then day two comes along. You're fasting. You're fasting. And a lot of people, if you're new, if you're new to a 36-hour fast, which is roughly what an alternate day fast is, just the thought seems daunting, right? The thought of not eating for such a long, from what I call from sunup to sunup, right? Because I would fast from the time I woke up till the next day I woke up, right? Not sunup to sundown. This isn't Ramadan. We're not, we're not eating when the sun goes down. You eat and the next sun up. So if you want to just forget about timing, just say from sunup to sunup, but it is, if you are, um, if you are wanting to follow an accurate timing, 36 hours roughly. So the thought of 36 hours without eating, well, think about it. You're going to be sleeping. You're going to be busy. You're going to be doing stuff. It's not too, too much when you think about it, that you're actually going to be like thinking about food and eating. You think about it, you're up or what? maybe seven, eight o'clock, and then you go to bed like nine, if you can earlier, if you can get through that window, that time you made it through your fast day. And by the way, if you're, if you're here, just go ahead and hit the like button just to get the algorithm going. When I decided to do my first fast day, I, I was scared of y'all. I was scared. When I decided to, I was like, okay, I was already, I had an advantage because I was already acclimated to periods of long fasting. I was doing 16-8 for about eight months. 
after the birth of my first son. So I've, I've, I was very used to skipping breakfast. Like that was no big deal to me. And even going to lunch, even going past lunch was okay by me. And then I tried OMAD. OMAD, I fasted all the way until 6 p.m. So I already knew how it felt to skip breakfast and skip lunch. So if you're diving right into alternate day fasting, just doing a whole uh, entire day's fast, for one, kudos to you. For two, it, it could be, it could be hard, but if you have enough discipline, if you have enough willpower, and if you really want to, you can do it. I promise. But it is helpful. It really is helpful if you have experience intermittent fasting. And I had experience intermittent fasting, right? But it didn't make me any less scared. And when you feel nervous about taking on such a daunting task, I want you to know it's normal. What you're feeling, being scared, being nervous, being worried about failing is is normal, okay? All of these feelings are totally normal. I am not a robot. You are not a robot. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. So I want you to take those feelings and acknowledge them. Bring it with you on fast day. And even if you do mess up, right? Say you end your fast early because you just either you're hungry, you really needed the comfort. It's okay, right? It's okay. When I went into it, I knew that I was nervous. I took it on, but I had my good old cup of water. I had a, like a thermos. I want to say a thermos, a water bottle, uh, a tempered water bottle full of ice water. (laughs) And I was like, this is my, I, I had that water bottle like it was my savior, I swear. Because every time I felt the urge or even the nerves that I was going to eat something, I took a sip. I, I babied, I nursed the ice water. Why was it ice water? I don't know. It's, it's more satisfying, more refreshing. I could chew on the ice. I, oh, and at that time, I forgot this really big detail, right? I was using crystal light. I was using crystal light. Bing, bing, bing. Crystal light. It wasn't exactly crystal light. It was like the 4C lemonade packet. The 4C lemonade packet is sugar-free. It has about five calories per packet. It got me through my fast day. Oh, it got me through my fast day. And you can use these things. Use them to your benefit. It helped me. I will never knock it. I will never knock a 4C lemonade packet, a stick of gum, a a bucket of ice. (laughs) a bucket of ice on your fast day. You do what you can to get through. And that's how I made it through my first fast day. I was sipping 4C flavored water all day. And then there comes a period of the day where you feel like you're going to fold. When you feel like you're going to fold, it, it usually hardly ever fails. Now, this could be a few things. It could either be bad habit, like the habit of wanting to eat which is not a bad habit. It's it's just a habit. You, you're you ready. You're ready to eat. Um, it could be a stressor is causing an emotional reaction. You now are going to turn to food instead of acknowledging the emotion. Happens very, very often. And the beautiful thing about fast days is that you don't have that blanket anymore. That blanket of eating your emotions is gone. And that's a good thing. That's a beautiful thing. And it actually makes fasting a little harder because a lot of people are not in tune with themselves. Self-awareness amongst the general public is pretty low. So raising self-awareness is a really important thing that we should be working on during fast days, acknowledgement. And it could also be simple self-sabotage like, oh, I made it this far or that's enough. Like I don't need to finish it. Self-sabotage is dangerous. It's dangerous. It really is. Um, So you need to be prepared for those moments. And it could happen throughout the day. Um, If you're used to intermittent fasting, it'll usually happen later in the day. For me, for me personally, 7 p.m. Never freaking fails. 7 p.m. It's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ruin my day now. Why? Why? I, I could not tell you why I wanted to, 
throughout the week, I realized every day at 7 p.m. on fast days, this feeling came on 7 p.m. 7 p.m. is usually the time I'm winding down with my family. I'm sitting with bowl of popcorn, watching TV, relaxing, bored, maybe, maybe a little lonely, a little sad, realizing where I am in life. That was then. Now, not so much, not at all. But then, yeah, I was, I was okay with that. So I need you to be aware of these things on fast day. Fast day for you should be a day of self-awareness. The biggest thing I preach over diet, over exercise is the power of the mind. The the mind is very powerful. It can make you do bad. It can make you do great. But you want to be self-aware of the emotions that are going on. And it's really easy, especially if you're an emotional eater, especially if you are a binge eater, to get triggered and go on a rampage. Sometimes we don't even know we're feeling this way until we remove that blanket the food blanket. And then you're just left with yourself and you are upset. You even like, I got mad sometimes because I wasn't eating because it's like, I, I want this comfort and now I don't have it. And I get like frustrated. I got frustrated and I like, I got sad. You won't believe how much I wanted food to satisfy the void. It's, it's, it's wild. Food, food in America has become a crutch. It's no longer I'm eating to stay alive. It's I'm alive so I can eat. The self-awareness is, um, crucial. And this is why I preach on journaling. If you find yourself struggling on fast days, It is within your best interest to just take a moment and offload, whether it's to a person, to a notebook, to a note app. Find a way to recognize the feelings that you're feeling, whether you are stressed, you're angry, it's that time of the day, it's that time of the month, and just get the emotion off of you so you can move on with your day. Self-awareness will be key on fast days because you don't have the blanket anymore. My experience, yeah, that was my experience on my fast days. Throughout the days, throughout my fast days, I became more and more self-aware. And it's a really beautiful thing. I have never experienced a weight loss journey quite like alternate day fasting. I've done 16-8, I've done OMAD. But when you do alternate day fasting, you realize so much about yourself. You realize what you're capable of. You realize that your mind really does control your body and not vice versa. You realize if I can control my eating, what the hell else can't I do? Because it's really a powerful thing when you're able to control what goes into your mouth. I need people to understand how powerful the act of self-control is. That is discipline, especially in this very excessive gluttonous society we currently live in. It's wild. The act of self-control can get you far because if you can control what you put in your mouth, you can control how you act. You can control how you emotionally react. You can control whether you get up early in the morning for a gym session, whether you want to apply for a new job. It it really is the start of a lot. It's not just weight loss. It's not just vanity. This is a whole reconstructing of the old you into a new you. I'm talking from experience. I'm speaking from experience because look at me now. Okay. (laughs) I just, just really quickly, I want you to know that where I am in my life currently right here, right now, if I didn't lose weight, the way I did, the way I did lose weight, I could not be confident. It took me a long time to even believe in myself enough to think I was deserving. But there's a self-confidence in yourself when you lose weight, when you decide you're worthy, and when you decide that you want to do better because you deserve more. People ask a lot, what can I eat? What can I eat? What can't I have? Can I have this? What can... All right. So let's, let's talk about what you can, can't, and maybe can have on a fast day, okay? I want to break it down into two fasting methods, right? There's the dirty fast and then the clean fast. I lost 
my weight through dirty fasting. And eventually after I became familiarized with Jen Stevens' Feast, Fast, Repeat, I learned about clean fasting and I did that the last few months I was truly alternate day fasting. So I'm focusing on dirty fasting because it's just more accessible. Um, a lot more people are able to do it. It takes a lot of the edge off. Um, dirty fasting is basically you can have, not you can have, researchers say that there is about a 50 calorie cap before you enable the metabolism. And I ran with it. Like I heard that and ran with it. I was like, I'm having collagen. I'm having a splash of cream in my coffee. I'm having gum and I'm having seltzer and I'm doing it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I reached 50. I, I can do that. So let's, let's detail it. Let's, let's talk about the details. On a dirty fast, you could have flavored water. You can have seltzer water. You could have flavored seltzer water. Do not have any drinks with artificial sweeteners, please. Uh, that is a really, it works against intermittent fasting. It really does. Even though it's calorie wise, it really does work against it because the body can't tell between real sugar and fake sugar. It's going to react all the same and it's going to spike that insulin. Um, and when we have major insulin spikes, that's when we are white knuckling it. And when I say white knuckling, I mean like bearing it through fast days. Like it is super hard when the blood sugar is spiked. Stay the hell away from artificial sweeteners. I used to use monk fruit, stevia, and my cut it out. No, you can have coffee. You can have flavored coffee. You can have lemon water. You could have apple cider vinegar. I enjoy having my supplements. My supplements are very important to me. Collagen is very important to me. I am a person. And if you can relate, let me know. I lost weight and I am a very squishy person. I am just a very soft person that doesn't have a lot of firmness. I'm not a firm person. I'm jealous of those that are firm. I lost some volume in my face. And uh, collagen just helps fill. Full transparency, I had fillers. You heard it here first. I had fillers last year, right here and right here, because they were just sunken. They were sunken. I never told you guys that before. <laughs> yeah, I had fillers last year, and it actually lasted, like it's supposed to last like 18 months. But so if, if you lose weight, these are things you have to look forward to. Like losing 60 pounds, you you may lose a lot of facial volume. So I love collagen um, on top of like just the fillers. Uh, collagen just helps fill out the hollowness because you can have fillers and still be sunken in. So I take collagen. I enjoy electrolytes. Electrolytes are fine as long as they're in the calorie range. I also take something like this. This is Athletic Greens AG1. I love this daily. It has been helping with my immune support. They actually sent it to me for a sponsorship and I loved it. Like I ended up really loving it. Like I really ended up loving it, surprisingly. Diet sodas, stay away from. Do not have diet sodas. There are no diet sodas allowed. There are no diet sodas allowed on fast day. No smoothies allowed on fast day. There are no fruit drinks allowed on fast day. There are no fruits. Stay away from butter. Stay away from coconut oil. Stay away from bone broth. I can't imagine you having bone broth that's more than 50 calories, but why would you want to spend your entire 50 calories on a cup of bone broth when you can have an entire feast the next day? Listen, it's up to you. You can cheat. You can cheat the process if you want. You can cheat the process if you want. And you you can still get results, but how fast do you want it? Don't do things like having bone broth and a smoothie on your fast day and expect drastic results. Just be realistic, okay? Cuz it's not about me, it's not about the group. It's about you. Only you know what you're doing, what you're in control of, and what results you ultimately want to see. So if you want to, if you want to get it done right, do it right because 
because there's there's been a lot of questions about like, can I have bone broth and how about a smoothie? No, no green juices, none of that. No, you should be having really basic things such as water, coffee, tea. You can have seltzer, flavored or unflavored. No, no, un, no sweeteners, no artificial sweeteners. You can have gum. Gum is a savior. Gum is a savior, y'all. Gum is a savior. For one, not only is gum something to keep your mouth busy, right? When you're fasting, your breath smells. <laughs> when an individual's mouth is not doing the act of chewing and swallowing, and the saliva becomes stagnant, and stagnant saliva becomes smelly. It just is what it is. If 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 that act isn't occurring, it's just going to get stagnant and smell. You could either have TheraBreath, which is one of my favorite breath neutralizers. I don't even call it a mouthwash. It's a breath neutralizer, in my opinion, because it, it neutralizes any odors. Or you could have gum. Keeps you busy. Your mouth is, is active. You feel like you're chewing on something, and it keeps your breath fresh for at least, you know, a matter of time. Have some gum. Make sure it's like five calories and less. And less. If you have like a stick, rip it in half and just have a piece. You don't need much gum. Like for me, gum was very helpful and it's still very helpful when I don't want to break my fast. Gum is a real big help. Okay. If you're on medication, you need to be taking your medication. Medication, your prescriptions come first. Your prescriptions come first. If you have to take your prescription with some kind of food item, either consult with your doctor to make sure that you have to take it with food, right? That's important. Ensure that, like it, if it has to be taken with food, just double check with your doctor. And if so, what is necessary? Like, can you have a, say a supplement, like a, a, a nutrient supplement like this and drink it down? Will that suffice? Do you need to have an egg? Like what, what can I eat? with this, that'll make it easy on the tummy. Just find those things out from your doctor because your prescription is mandatory, okay? Unless it's not, once again, you that's you and your physician, mandatory. Don't, don't play with that, please. We want you healthy first and foremost, and hopefully then the fasting could clean up everything else and then you'll be off prescriptions. That'll be, that'll be ideal, right? any high blood pressure, any uh, metformin, those kind of things, any anti-inflammatories, we want to get you off of those. We're, we're moving in the right direction if you're alternate day fasting. I swear, autophagy is supplements, vitamins. I add it to, if I'm, I'm really going to be done with gummies, like I'm, I'm over gummies, but if I had gummies, I'll take my vitamins on a fast day. Usually my gummies are like 15 calories. I'm, I'm, I'm ending it with gummies. For one, I don't feel like gummies are effective. I swear. Ideally, I want to get liquid multis. If you have a liquid multivitamin, 100% absorption. You will feel the difference. You, If you want to feel the difference from your vitamins, get a liquid. You don't want to go the liquid route. Capsules, capsules. The ones that like you can break in half and pour. Capsules, ideal. I love taking my vitamins. I love taking my supplements. Those are very crucial. Take your prescription, take your vitamins, take your supplements if you'd like, and if they fit into the 50 calorie max on your dirty fast. If you are clean fasting, let's talk about clean fasting. Clean fasting, you're not triggering, triggering an insulin response whatsoever. This term was coined by Jen Stevens, the author of Delay, Don't Deny, and Feast Rest. Peace, fast, repeat. Highly recommend if you are serious about your journey. If you are serious about your journey, you need to be reading materials by published authors, by uh, medical professionals. You need to be reading articles by peer reviewed. Like those things are crucial. Jen Stevens makes, I read Peace, fast, repeat. I have it on audio and I have the physical copy and I read it twice. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. So please go ahead and read that. Um, and then you'll understand more what clean fasting is. But clean fasting coined by Jen Stevens is the non-triggering or the, the non-response of insulin. So 
all the things that I listed in dirty fasting that you, that's a go is a no go in clean fasting. And why would someone clean fast? Why would somebody choose not to have these shortcuts and these, um, you know, easier routes on your fast day. So on, on clean fasting, you basically have water on flavored coffee. When you do not trigger an insulin response, that means you're not triggering hunger cravings. You're, you're not triggering cravings. And when you're not triggering cravings, you're able to get through the fast day easier. Like you're just sailing. You're literally sailing. And when I started, like I was doing dirty fasting for months and months and months and months. That's all I knew. And then I read the book and I did clean fasting for about two months. And I was like, wow, I, I didn't have to struggle. <laughs> I'm, I'm cruising on a, on a fast day. This, it felt so weird. I almost felt like I was cheating. Cause I was like, it shouldn't be this easy. Like it was really this easy. Was it really this easy? Like I didn't, I didn't have to go through all that willpower. It was just as simple as just drinking water. And I knew that. The funny thing is, I knew that. When I didn't drink any water on my fast days, I felt nothing. I felt no cravings. I felt no blood sugar spikes. I felt even keel. And it is the most, it's almost, as I said, it's almost scary because it's like, I'm supposed to be drinking water, but I don't want to. And I, I don't feel the need to, and I feel great. And I realized that was dry fasting and dry fasting is when you have nothing on your fast day, no water, no, you're just swallowing your own spit. <laughs> you're just swallowing your own spit throughout the day. And I was doing a lot of dry fasting because I realized I just don't feel the cravings. But then when I read and understood what Jen Steve was saying in her book, the clean fast, why I was white knuckling it on days when I was eating gum or having lemon water or having collagen in my coffee, it was triggering an insulin response. So when you're not triggering the insulin response during a clean fast, you're just able to get through it better. And what's even better, which is the most delicious part of fasting, of intermittent well, intermittent fasting period is when you start to tap into the health benefits. Because I love this quote by Jen Stevens, fasting is a health plan with weight loss as a side effect. I just love, I just, I love that. You re it really puts into view what you're doing here. Because when we dig deeper than vanity, you realize you're doing so much more for yourself, for your future, for your loved ones, for your doctor's bills, for your insurance, for your copays. It's it's re it's all about health. As you get older, you will understand that day in and day out. So yes, when you clean fast, you really get the benefits of autophagy. And autophagy is the process of basically cell renewal within the body. The body starts to repair because now it's no longer taking time to digest, extract, excrete from your body. All this old over long overdue process of, you know, just constantly digesting. It's taking that energy and focusing it elsewhere. So I like to describe it as the dirty fast is for the weight watchers and the clean fast is for the health watchers. It's there's so many benefits to fasting other than just being skinny. Please, and not even skinny, like because I'm not skinny. I got body yaddy yaddy, okay. <laughs> it was really awesome to see my true frame come alive. And I want that for you. If you are severely overweight, if you are obese, morbidly obese, and you've ever been slim in your life and missed that figure or never knew what your figure really looked like, what an amazing way to start that because fasting has a way of melting fat. And that's why I preach like, leave the scale alone because the scale cannot tell you your muscle to fat ratio. It can't tell you your water. It can't, well, if you have really fast, fancy ones, like, yeah, I could tell you that. But majority of people are gonna be like, the number isn't lower. This isn't working. I'm out. 
just give yourself a chance to really experience the melting. I had abs, but the scale was like minuscule, maybe like two more pounds. When you start using up all the glucose, all the glycogen stores, which is the, the carbohydrate fuel, and start tapping into the fat for fuel, your ketones, that's when the body starts eating up the fat reserves. That's where you want to be. And when it starts eating up the fat, that's when the figure is revealed. That's when you start leaning out. That's when the pants start falling off. That's when the rings start getting loose. The cheekbone starts coming out. The jawline is start. The collarbone. It's fun to watch these things come out. So yeah, those are the do's and don'ts on fast day. All right. So that's that. I pray this, this ADF lie was very beneficial. Tomorrow's fast day. I am freaking rooting for you. You got this man, woman, old, young, slim, not slim. Uh, you got this. I am rooting for you. You have no idea because I wanted someone to root for me and I didn't have that. But here I am for you and I'm so proud of you. Super proud of you. Bye-bye.